Studio 33 AD Catholic Media My dearly beloved brothers and sisters in the faith Justice and peace are the two gifts that Jesus the Messiah brings to the world They are described in the first reading and the responsorial psalm today Justice and peace how much we long for them. Supreme Court Justice Horace Gray once informed a man who had appeared before him in a lower court and had escaped conviction on a technicality. I know that you are guilty and, and you know it. And I wish you to remember that one day you will stand before a better and wiser judge and that there you will be dealt according to justice and not according to law. Sometimes there is no justice in this world. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liber liberty and justice for all. Justice for all, that is the ideal. But we know how often that justice is lacking in our country. We long for it, we desire it, but more often than not, true justice is found wanting. Justice and peace. Now what about peace? We long for it too. One time a wife had provided a tombstone for her husband's grave. On it, she had inscribed two sentences, rest in peace, and then below it, until we meet again. Now individually, those two, those two are good statements, but together they don't come out quite right. That's the problem with our using the word peace in the limited sense that we do so often. We say peace when we mean the cessation of hostilities until we meet again, perhaps. In Scripture, the word for the peace of Christ is shalom. The peace of Jesus is not just the absence of discord and conflict. It is the presence of harmony and wholeness. One time I was helping the married couple that was going through some troubles. A few months later I met them again and I asked, How are you doing now? Oh, it's great, the husband said. We are not yelling and screaming at each other anymore. Well, we don't talk that much, but at least it's peaceful. And I told him, you have to raise the bar a little bit higher for your marriage. Your marriage is not about the cessation of hostilities. It should be about acquiring the true shalom of Christ. True peace is not just the absence of violence or hostilities. The gift of shalom of Jesus is not just resolving the disharmony in our lives. He is bringing us the gift of the wholeness of life. And deep inside, we all want it. We want the shalom. So that, there you have it, justice and peace. And justice and peace, they go together. They are inseparable. They are not options. Rather, they are absolutely necessary for any personal or, or social relationship in family, business, marriage, employment, or friendship. Justice, justice shall flourish in his time and fullness of peace forever, we sang today in the responsorial psalm. Christ Jesus is the one who brings us both justice and peace. But please notice the order, justice and peace not peace and justice, because you cannot have true peace without justice. 
many who read the passage from Isaiah, and I've read so many commentaries last week on that passage that we have heard from Isaiah, and many commentators immediately focus on the beautiful images of harmony and peace. The wolf shall be a guest of the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid. The calf and the young lion shall browse together with a little child to guide them. There shall be no more harm or ruin on my holy mountain. Beautiful words, aren't they? That is, of course, the vision of the future expressed in symbolic language. When Jesus comes again at the end of time, things will be made right. Peace will reign. But that's the peace part, the second part. What about the justice part? Not many pay attention to that fragment that comes before the vision of peace. Not by appearance shall he judge, nor by his hearsay shall he decide, but he shall judge the poor with justice and decide all right for the land afflicted. He shall strike the ruthless with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall, he shall slay the wicked. That's the justice part, and it comes before the peace part. We cannot separate those two. They have to go together, justice and peace. Peace follows justice. Because the coming of the Messiah, bringing peace, will not ignore the evils in the world. Jesus will not say, well, evils don't matter. Violence doesn't matter. I forgive you, forget, you, forget it. Your sins don't matter. But they do. God is just, and justice rewards good and punishes everything evil. You cannot build peace if you don't have justice. Just think about it. Jesus came into the world and he had to die to make things right. He had to pay the debt that we couldn't pay. He reconciled justice and peace in his own flesh. He offered himself on the cross, spilling his blood, offering his life. And we remember that whenever we gather to celebrate the Holy Mass, we are at the foot of the cross. We are reminded that it cost God nothing to create the world. He did it by the sheer power of his word, but it cost him the death of his son to redeem it. That's the true price that Jesus paid for justice and peace. Peter Kreeft tells the story of a young man that once appeared before the judge. He was charged with reckless driving. He was found guilty. The fine was $10,000 or jail time. The judge declared him guilty and demanded that he pay the fine. The boy had no money and could not pay the fine. Then the judge stepped down from the judge's bench, took out his checkbook, and paid the fine himself. The boy was judge's son. Now you can only hope that the son learned something that day. That is what God does for us because we are his children. And how come we often do not remember that? We don't remember that Jesus pay our debt. Today, John the Baptist wants to wake us up to that reality, a voice of the one crying out in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. The Messiah is coming, prepare, prepare him a highway in your heart. You want peace? Yes, the Messiah will bring peace. He will bring justice, but you must do your part. If you, if you want peace, then work for justice. Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths, 
All flesh shall see the salvation of God. So we have our task ahead of us to work for justice in our world. I would like to close with the oriental ancient maxim that says this, if there is righteousness in your heart, there will be beauty in the character. If there is beauty in the character, there will be harmony in your family. If there is harmony in the family, there will be order in the nation. When there is order in the nation, there will be peace in the world. If there is righteousness in your heart, if there is no righteousness in your heart, then don't complain about the lack of justice in the family, in the nation, and in the world. Everything starts in sight of us. That's what John the Baptist wants to tell us. It's up to us to respond to the beautiful gifts of the Messiah, the gifts of his justice and his peace. Studio 33 AD, Catholic Media.